Hello everyone, welcome, hola a todos, bonjour a tous et bienvenue, bienvenidos a todos, mi nombre es Damien Rohrbach, hoy uh, tutorial de render de joyería con Light Tracer version 2, today big news, Light Tracer version 2 is out, and yes, they have a new path guiding algorithm that render caustics, so we're going to put that to the test using three render scenes of three different designs. Let's get started. Okay, so if you don't know what version you're running and you don't know what the new features are in the version you're using, you can always go to this little green circle, cover it, and you'll see the GPU that the software is using and the version that you are running, and also some historical about the features and bug fixes. Okay, so here we are at version 2.0.1, and we can see the new features starting with version 2, the path guiding mode for complex lighting scenarios, the transparent shadow technique for interiors and alpha maps. There's IES support, which is very good for architects. There's an improved coding material, which is very good for car renders and product renders. Uh, the improved shadow and reflection catchers. I won't be using that today, but it's good to know that uh, Light Tracer has very nice glossy and shadow catchers. I tested those just play around and they're very good you can do very nice effects using the catchers the camera slots i generally only use one camera per scene but it's always good to have options for multiple cameras in one scene using the slots the 3d modeling tools and extended scene floors uh, this is a pretty nice feature because uh, well generally you just have your product like a jewel and you bring it to the scene, you don't have time to go to Blender or Tree Design to make a more complex scene. And now you can create some 3D objects and stands using Light Tracer. There's a small option right here. Plus, so this is an interesting, nice little feature they added. Uh, I use it from time to time. And. Uh, the refreshed UI and bug fixes. Well, this is aesthetic, but it's always nice to have a cared and pretty UI to work in a nice environment. All right, so I'm going to use designs I made for clients and students last week. First, a simple rose gold ring with uh, diamonds and prong settings and a central pink tone line set in prongs. Uh, this is quite a simple design, but it's a pretty design. All right, the second design is a custom Rolex ring with a wonderful hexagonal gallery, a big onyx, and diamonds and prongs halo. And here we are with the start of the show. You might have recognized it from some renders I published last week. This is a magnificent white gold ring with a lot of diamonds and a big central sapphire. And also the side diamonds have a very neat French prong setting. I generally export everything in object format to Blender to prepare the scenes for the renders. So here we are with the first design. And uh, I adjusted the prongs. Remember that what you saw first was the manufacturing model with the prongs way longer than needed. Stone setters prefer that. It's quite normal. But for a render, we need to prepare the prongs. They must be closed and finished and polished to look like the finished product. So here we are. I use the sculpt tool to do that and soften the endings, get the prongs. And then also, obviously, I set the ring on a custom ground. So I made a ground using geometry nodes. Sadly, today, this is not the topic of this video, but yes, I will be making more tutorials using Geometry Nose and Blender 3.0, which is officially coming out pretty soon. We were already using Blender 3.0 Alpha for quite a long time and having a lot of fun with Geometry Nodes. The default cube, obviously, uh, with small bevel, and they're settled around on the ground with some random coordinates to make this modern uneven ground, which I think contrasts pretty well with this ring. So I'm very looking forward to making this render. Okay, so important things that you must check and do in Blender, by example, is that, like I already said, check your geometry and the materials. Just put very simple names, but do assign the materials already for your objects. My ground has a metal material, the stone has a pink stone material, you know, simple names, simple and efficient. So obviously shaders do not export. There are basically no compatibility between almost any software. Each render engine has their own custom shaders, but the object format do export at least the name and the material assignment of the object, which is very important when you are modeling something there, bring it in another software to make some more modeling and then exporting it to a render engine like Light Tracer version 2 that we're going to use today, which is the topic of today's video. So assign the materials. Then when you're done, select your objects here, go to file, export, object format, wavefront, golden years, 90s, till the format survived. It's a wonderful format. 
It's my favorite format. Dolly X used a bit less than the STL format because it's a bit heavier. It makes more geometry. So for 3D printer, the STL format is the king. But like I already said, the object format does export the material name. Just the name, but that's cool enough to work with it. Okay, so export object. So here you obviously put the name you want. So I have, this is the for light tracer render. Example one, simple rolls ring. But there's something very important before you do the export. Selection only, especially if you brought many objects to your scenes and you're exploring very specific objects. Or you will have later the very bad surprise to see that your scene is going to be very slow to load and to export previously, obviously, because you are going to be exporting hidden geometry to the object file. And it's going to be a wonderful mess, a very slow mess, and you will be sadly very sad. So just check the selection only and make a proper selection before exporting your object. When you hit the export object button, you're going to see that the export to the object format in Blender is quite fast, which is always a good thing. That's also why I like that format here. It's done, like I said. Even if we do have a couple of million, or a couple of millions, one million, two millions. Yes, sir. Okay, great. So that's the basic for handling your scene in Blender and prepping it for the render engine. All right, so here with the second scene, it's the custom Rolex ring with the magnificent gallery on the inside, a big onyx and some diamonds all around with prongs. I made a simple displacement on a high resolution plane. And don't forget to add a bigger plane because you know that because I'm going to render this ring standing. Yeah, of course, about that. Many jewelers do render the rings standing. It's not that realistic. Even if maybe a ring like that could stand on its own. Uh, many jewelers and photographs use um, transparent wires or a bit of rubber under the ring. Very famous tricks. So yeah, they do stand. But also like I made in the first scene, like if you remember, the ring was standing on the ground. It's also a very basic way to set the ring in a more realistic position. Nobody will ever agree which is the correct way to make a render. So we're going to make all kinds of render. Poetic ones, realistic ones, crazy ones, bad ones, good ones, useless ones, and amazing ones. All right, so once you're done um, ambienting the scene, because, well, you always must be creative in some way, here I made a wood displacement on this floor. And the same, take your object, export, selection only. Well, in this case, it doesn't matter, but remember what I said, because someday it will happen to you. You will forget to check the selection only option and you will get a very slow export and a huge object file. And you will laugh remembering what I said. All right, so here we are again with the start of the show. This magnificent white gold ring with a lot of diamonds set in prongs and a big oval sapphire at the center. For this one, I made a cloth-like, fabric-like floor or ground. I never know how to call them. Floors, grounds, objects. Call it whatever you like. And to do that, I use the sculpt tool and the magnificent cloth brush in sculpt mode in Blender to give a little bit of wavy fabric effect. To the ground, to the floor, to the object on the ground, to the cloth, to the fabric, you decide. Now, don't forget to select export selection only. In this scene, it doesn't matter a lot because I need copies and modifications to some objects. Don't forget to check the selection only when exporting your object file. All right, so now we're all ready with our three different scenes, three different designs, three different settings, different materials, different sizes, different styles to be rendered using Light Tracer version 2. Okay, so welcome to Light Tracer version 2. So you can recognize the first design, the first example scene. This is Light Tracer at its best, and it's simply amazing. So obviously, I'm going to show you how I got here and what settings to turn on to get this kind of render. So let's go load our scene here. It's uh, example one, what is up and replace the scene. That's how you would start. All right, so now I don't see nothing at all because the depth of field is turned on. Let's come here and put a normal camera. Okay, back to normal. Now we can very simply tweak the camera position here. So Light Tracer is really plug and drop. What you see is what you get, and it's simply amazing. Here on the left, I have the HDR and two light emitters. So you can delete them or add new emitters here. Here you can change the HDR. Remember that the HDR sets the entire mood and shadow in your scene. That's the hardest part to tweak. Here you can change the intensity and the rotation of the HDR. Obviously, I won't touch it because it's perfect for this uh, HDR right there. So there's a library of HDR already present in Light Tracer. That's nothing new. But for the new features, we should go to rendering here, and they're quite hidden. Down here, open this tab, and you'll find a new path guiding algorithm. The normal is path tracing, but the path guiding is going to calculate more refractions 
dispersions, and above all, the caustics that I was one of the people who requested Light Tracer to be able to render caustics because that makes now Light Tracer one of the best rendering options available. Honestly, we're going to go through the process to see that in action and really enjoy the new features. Okay, so we need some materials. Let's go to the library. The material library was already very good. It's very good. So metal, I need some rose metal here for my rose gold. Just drag and drop. The stones, let's go to glass. And down here, we're going to get hmm, diamond, drag and drop. So the diamond comes already perfectly set with uh, all the realistic properties for this version and IOR. And we need some red stone. I want some pink tourmaline, so I will have to tweak this. And for the floor, let's have a go at mm, some uh, dark gray ceramic, drag and drop. And uh, okay, this is starting to look good. So first thing to remember, Light Tracer is a progressive render engine. So don't be too quick to judge what you're seeing because it's going to look better as passes go by, as time goes by. And maybe we're not seeing exactly what the lights refraction reflection dispersion is really doing in the scene. What I can do is lower the sample amount to let's say 50 to have a faster preview, okay? But for the time being, let's tweak uh, little details here and there. So the stone, I want some lighter pink because it's a pink tourmaline, something like this. The IOR is 164, here we are. And uh, we're going to lower the density to one, uh, no, sorry, to 275. Here we are. So it does not saturate too much. Um, okay, the depth of field external again. It's very easy to set the focus right there with one click. And the amount may be a 12. I don't want too much, but I do want the background to be clearly out of focus because there's not much going on back there. Okay, here we can hide the tabs. Left to right, that's take 20. That has changed a bit. Uh, I like it. Okay, so let's give it uh, some time here, but I'm already liking the color here of the stone, some caustics here, and there we have also some transparent shadows, which is the new gains of the new path guiding algorithm that we can already see in action, and I'm really liking what I see. We still need some denoising. So, denoising here in rendering, Light Tracer has the real-time denoiser, the Intel CPU denoiser, and the optics denoiser. But now I'm going to use the Intel CPU because I'm making a 4K render and you can't use the optics at that resolution in Light Tracer. But anyway, I prefer the Intel denoising and the denoiser here, you can check that it's turned on. Now it already started to work. Uh, that's the first pass of the denoiser. But obviously the sample level is too low uh, for the entire render. But first you may want to have a look at a low sample render like this one now. So everything is good. Yes, we have some shadows. We have some caustics here. Uh, dispersion in the gemstones is amazing. Nice lights on the left and the right. Remember my light emitters here, one on the left. Uh, you can always tweak the power of the emitters and also very important, now Light Tracer works with the famous IES light formats. That's very important for the architect to have lights propagation that are more realistic and based on real life data. Okay, so the power here, we can check this one is stronger than this one, I think, yeah, that's right. And this is great. Um, uh, don't forget to check that the amount of bounces is at the highest level and take advantage of the new path guiding algorithm for your renders. Okay, so this is a very simple setup. Uh, also the bloom effect at point 0.25, let's go to point 0.3. <laughs> three, one will be three right here, like this. This is great. And we're good to go at higher samples. So when you like the samples, simply go at a thousand by example, like this, and you'll have an estimated time for the render to finish. So the speed is good. We're at 4K, we have all the optical effects turned on. So there's a lot of rays to calculate. Don't expect it to be as fast as Cyclix, obviously, but there's not much to compare there. We're going to get a very high quality render with a nice uh, set of features. Here maybe before I really go to the full sample amount, the gemstone is still a bit too saturated. So let's lower this to 0.2 and the color is still less pink here. All right, with this we'll be good to go. Let's go at a thousand again. 
and let the software render. So it's going to take something like 20 minutes and um, I will have to let the software do its job. But here we are. We can all agree that the new features of Light Tracing version 2 are, are amazing. The, the result speaks for itself. And just wait for the denoiser pass uh, to be fully convinced, obviously. Okay, I, I like the way that the gemstone uh, became less saturated now. And remember, it's a progressive render engine. And when you see what you like on screen, you can simply click this icon here and select the file format and save this render as a PNG, JPEG, or HDR, which is also pretty nice. And it's as simple and friendly as it gets. So really, a round of applause for Light Tracer version 2. It has all we can dream of. And it really makes it one of the really good options and best options available for product rendering, car rendering, jewelry rendering. Uh, and this is just the first example. So I made this first example really straight to the point to show you what to set, what to look for, what to change, what to tweak to get this quality in a very fast and easy manner. So I think you can agree we achieved fully this first example and we're good to go for the next designs and scenes. In the next scenes, I will be experimenting more. I will be failing more because I will be testing and trying things with the materials. So obviously it will be a different process. All right, something very simple, but very important. Don't forget to save your scene. It's going to be saved in a custom format of Light Tracer. So let's call it test one rose gold ring render. There you go. Don't forget to save the setup. If you want to work with it again, you should. <laughs> it's always better to save your work. So also something uh, important that uh, some of you may want to check is the GPU temperature during rendering because some render engines tend to use the GPU a lot and overheat your GPU quite much, which is something obviously that I don't like and generally that we don't like. So here during uh, rendering with Light Tracer version 2, you can see that my GPU is uh, rising to something like 70 degrees Celsius, which is pretty low. In fact, it's a normal operating temperature. Custom Rolex, here we are. Replace. You could add objects, just adding, loading and adding instead of replacing. All right, it was really fast. This scene is the, the heaviest one, in fact. It's starting to become a bit more interesting. Maybe if the color is not that good. Let's try some coffee, reddish coffee, something, yeah, something like this. Okay, this, okay, but uh, slightly more saturated. This is starting to, to go somewhere because we have a peel and teal effect from the blue of the HDR to an orange on the floor. This is quite the thing, a bit lighter. Okay, so see how stepping here, stepping there, seeing one thing, something totally wrong, and then that's when you know you become a professional, that you're guiding the process till you narrow it down. All right, so as you can see, sometimes it's just about focusing, testing, tweaking, and exactly clarifying your goal. And also, you can see that at the end, I just came back to my first idea, a wooden floor. And that's always a great lesson. Uh, one of my teachers, one of my French teacher when I was uh, in that school as a kid, I was pretty young, used to say, your first idea is always the best idea. Okay, great. So here we are. 
second test render achieved. You might agree, you might not agree, but the job is done. All right, fantastic. So here we are now, third design, third example scene, the star of the show, the moment we've all been waiting for. So let's load that fantastic ring. It's this one, so fire ring, replay some. And let's have fun creating something beautiful. That's why we're here with Light Tracer version 2. Uh, mm. Let's move the camera somewhere here. I mean, this looks pretty good. Okay. So again, right from the beginning, let's find the right settings. Okay, materials first. Uh, metal hmm, here, maybe this one, white metal. This is great. I'm just going to rotate a bit more so we don't see those circles there. Let's center this a bit. Okay, this is nice. We have diamonds again, obviously. Drag and drop. And style. Here. Now for the floor, which was first intended to be a fabric. Okay, so here, cloth. And, well, let's try, actually, a, a fabric. Uh-huh. This is interesting, too. But I think that the leather option, the dark leather, leather, dark gray. Okay, here, so arrow, click, downloads, you get the material. Here. So it looks bad at first, and you might see how disappointing. Select your object, go to properties. Here we have the texture, and basically we can change the scale. So let's make it smaller and smaller and smaller until it's the right scale. Apparently, 30% is the charm. It goes well with the size of a chuo, like this ring, because obviously that's one of the ways to get something realistic with some very simple textures, in fact. So this one is amazing because it's stylable. Let's have a look at 25. Okay. We have this. This is pretty nice. Okay. Let's have a look at the rendering options. Uh, bounces at 32. You already know that. Check your algorithm. The new path guiding will be a better choice for jewelry, yet again. We all know that now, so let's have fun and do exactly what we know works best. All right, so once you're done with the tweaking and finally find that perfect setting for lines, reflections, colors, reflections, refractions, dispersion, bloom, caustics, and all that you really enjoy in a jewelry render that really make your jewel stand out, don't forget to set the sample amount to something that will make you proud of your final render. Obviously, it's going to take a little more time to get that quality, but we are jewelers. This is jewelry rendering, and we totally deserve this quality. Well, this is, I think, a perfect image to end this wonderful tutorial. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial a lot. Welcome to my channel. My name is Damien Rohrbach. I am the jewelry artist. Thanks for following me, and uh, thanks for all your support, as always. Become members to get wonderful 3D assets for Blender. And as always, be nice to people, be nice to animals, and be nice to the planet. Take care, and see you soon.